I get a lot of questions about career paths in software engineering, especially from students that are studying computer science in college or beginner software engineers that just got into the industry. So if you fall in that demographic, please watch on because in this video, I will talk about all the career paths in software engineering, some of the niche ones, and even some that I think are getting phased out. And I will let you know what I think is the best option for you if you're just starting out in software engineering. Hello everyone, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. And this channel is all about demystifying and simplifying the process of becoming an effective and productive software engineer. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. And as usual, this video has timestamps, so feel free to skip around or jump to the section that interests you. Also links to any related videos or reference material will be in the description below. Let's get started. In the most basic sense, backend engineering is when you work on the server side, writing application logic to make sure that the right set of data gets served to the client side. What your client actually is varies by the product that you're working on, and that can change the type of work you do as a backend engineer. But in most cases, backend engineering is used in the context of web development, where the client is a website or a mobile app. So the backend engineer is basically in charge of things like building the API, writing the business logic, as well as storage and retrieval of data. Backend engineering is also one of the most popular career paths in software engineering. The next career option is infrastructure engineering. This is essentially like backend engineering, but outside the context of just web development. While the typical backend engineer would be doing work necessary to get the right set of data over to the client facing side of their application, the infrastructure engineer would be building things like storage systems, caching systems that the backend engineers would use. So I don't know if that makes sense. So infrastructure engineers are sort of the backend engineers for the backend engineers. And because infrastructure engineers are working on the building blocks of a much larger system, they are expected to have a very thorough understanding of data structures and algorithms, common engineering best practices like solid principles and design patterns, as well as a very key keen sense of system design. So if you are the kind that's always wondering how SQL Server works under the hood or how Redis has such high throughput, then infrastructure engineering may be the right option for you. The next popular career option and probably the most popular one is front-end engineering, which is also interchangeably used with web development. Web development used to be much less technical even just a decade ago, but as browsers and mobile devices get more and more powerful, the web development role also has evolved into something that is much more technical. That being said, the barrier to entry for front-end engineering or web development is still much lower than something like infrastructure engineering. And for that reason, this also tends to be a great career option for people trying to switch from non-engineering backgrounds. And that's also the reason why you will notice a lot of boot camps being very front-end focused. However, front-end engineering requires a lot of creativity and a good sense of aesthetics. So if you're the kind that obsesses about using user interactions, color palettes, and likes having things not just functional, but also looking good, then this may be a great career option for you. The next option is full stack engineering which is basically a combination of front-end engineering and back-end engineering. Full-stack engineering is also most commonly used in the context of web-based applications. And since the web is only getting more and more powerful and isn't going anywhere soon, this is a great career option to be on. The next option is mobile development. This is basically like web development, only that you'll be building mobile apps instead of websites. And your two main choices here are either Android or iOS. And based on that, it will also dictate the stack you work on. For Android, you're looking at Java or Kotlin. And for iOS, you're looking at Objective-C or Swift. That being said, you don't always have to build native apps. There are a lot of uh, mobile development toolkits like Ionic, where you can use your web development knowledge on things like React or Angular and use that to build mobile apps as well. With the rapid rise of mobile devices, this has obviously become a very popular career path. Just like front-end engineering, this also has a low barrier to entry compared to something like infrastructure engineering, when you can take something quickly from an idea to a product. That being said, unless you're building something very self-contained like a calculator, most mobile apps do have very involved backend aspects to them. As increasing amounts of data becomes easily accessible, large tech companies are not the only ones that are looking for data scientists. As a data scientist, you will use 
scientific methods, algorithms, and models to extract insights from structured as well as unstructured data. You're expected to be very data-driven and highly technical to be able to build complex quantitative algorithms to synthesize data used to answer questions and drive strategy in your organization. Data science is an overall umbrella that covers other areas like machine learning, artificial intelligence, data mining, and big data in general. Data science is a competitive and challenging field to get into because as I've mentioned before, you're expected to have a strong quantitative background in statistics and linear algebra, as well as in programming with a focus on data mining, warehousing, and modeling. Data engineering is the aspect of data science that focuses on the practical applications of data collection and analysis. For all the work that data scientists do to answer questions using large sets of information and data, there have to be mechanisms for collecting and validating that data and that's what data engineering is all about. Data engineering basically involves architecting systems and pipelines that allow companies to move large sets of data very quickly. It's not uncommon to see data scientists do both the analysis and engineering side of data, and many companies also have their infrastructure engineers work on the data engineering side of things. As a data engineer, you can expect to work with large-scale distributed systems like Hadoop, Hive, Kafka, Spark, and various NoSQL storage systems. Speaking of data science, this video is sponsored by DataCamp, an online learning platform with over 300 courses for all skill levels that makes it easy to build data analytical skills. You can test your skills to find the right courses for you. You can learn at your own pace with interactive courses and hands-on exercises. I wanted to refresh my knowledge on natural language processing, so I recently took the natural language processing in Python course on DataCamp. The course was laid out very well with clear video explanations that gradually built on top of each other. I also loved that after each video explanation, there was an interactive coding section where I had to solve related problems which made the course very fun and engaging. DataCamp's code compilation and build infrastructure is fully web-based so you can practice all you want from within your browser without any additional software. They also have a mobile version which means that you can learn on the go by doing quick daily challenges. Subscriptions start at only $25 a month for unlimited access to all the courses. So invest on yourself today by signing up for DataCamp. Use the link in the description below to check out the first chapter of any course for free. Most of us probably got into computers because of games and have probably built at least some game or have at least tried to build a game at some point in our careers. Game development can be a very rewarding experience as gaming is one of the ultimate forms of user interaction and engagement. But it's also a complex field to get into and requires extensive knowledge of physics, math, shading, rendering, so on and so forth. Also, there are not many companies that build games and the ones that do are known to have very tight budgets, hectic release schedules, and very high pressure and competitive work environments. But if you love building games, that trumps everything else and this is still a great career option for you. Another great career option for software engineers is freelancing. You can work via companies like Upwork and Fiverr and put your skills to use on a project to project basis. I know quite a few people that work as freelancers and they love the flexibility that it affords them. I do find that freelancing is more of an option if you are a front-end engineer, a full stack engineer or a mobile engineer because I don't think I've seen that many freelance gigs for people like infrastructure engineers or data engineers. So if you don't like the corporate work structure and want to have the freedom to work on projects you choose, freelancing may be a great option for you. Do keep in mind though, it may be a little difficult to get into freelancing to begin with because most people that are looking to hire freelancers look for some sort of experience. So if you're a beginner, you may run into the chicken or the egg problem. So it may be a good option to start out as either a front-end engineer or full stack developer or a mobile engineer and then once you have a couple of years of experience switch over to freelancing. This one may surprise you, but a very legit career option for software engineers is product or program management. Especially if you are technical, but also are analytical, love driving projects from start to finish, have good communication skills, and are obsessed about customers. Some of the best engineers that I've worked with were program managers. 
I'm gonna put some of the less common career paths together. Things like database administration, quality assurance, DevOps, and reliability engineering. While there are many companies that continue to actively hire for these roles, they are getting less common because of the popularity of the generalist software engineer role. Which takes me to the final career path that I will talk about, general software engineering or the generalist role. While they do hire for all of the roles mentioned in this video, the generalist role is getting more popular. Companies are looking these days for engineers that can wear multiple hats and do many different things. You may work as an infrastructure engineer on year one, then go to front-end engineering on year two, then work in data engineering year three, so on and so forth. And for a beginner, I think this is also the best option to go for. To excel as a generalist, you not only need strong foundations of software engineering, but also must be highly data-driven. And if you have an eye for aesthetics and are also customer driven even better. I think these are all great areas to develop for any software engineer, but the generalist role just captures all of them in a single role. If you start off by keeping the generalist role in mind and take your courses and learn the concepts accordingly, you may find it much easier to switch to other fields later on. But that doesn't mean that you should start learning five different programming languages and eight different frameworks when you are starting out. It's really important to focus on one thing when you're starting out and then when you get good at it, expand to different areas. I have an entire video dedicated to things I wish I knew when I started programming, where I talk about things like the importance of focusing on just one thing as a complete beginner. So do check that video out. And there are other career options like people management, consulting, or solutions architect, but I'm not gonna talk about those in this video because they do require you to have a lot of experience in some of these other career paths first before you can start venturing into those. So yeah, these are the career paths that you can take as a software engineer today. I hope this video provided you some clarity and gave you some idea about the roles that fall under different career paths. If you found it useful, please hit the like button, comment, share, and subscribe. And while you're here, please check out some of these videos that I think you'll find useful as well. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>